So my name is Mike Mendes, and I'm going to go over an ITB2 install, installing Shrine and adding it to a hub, and then we're going to query the data, which will have COVID-19 data set in it. So obviously we'll go over the installation. We're going to install an uh, Cynthia data set using the ACT ontology with some COVID-19 data, and then we're going to set up a Shrine node and attach it to a hub. And as an exercise, we're going to query that Shrine node. To begin, we're going to do a complete install from a VM that doesn't have anything on it yet. So here we have this VM. To give a little look at it, we've allocated about 100 gigs of drive space. We're going to install Postgres on this and then uh, install, load the data. So let's begin by installing Java. Yes. Now if we do a Java hyphen version. You will notice that we have Java installed and we're using the 1.8 version. So let's install Apache PHP. And last, we're going to install Postgres. Okay, so now we have all the core prerequisites done. So let's begin by downloading the software and then extracting it. So if we go to our web browser, we will notice that you go to itp2.org slash software. You can get the latest software. And because we're doing a new install, we're gonna do this one, the itp2 core new 1712.a, okay? And so as you notice, it's a fairly large file, but we'll start downloading it and then continue. Okay, now that it's finished downloading, if we look at our directory, we'll notice that we have this itp2.core. And so now let's extract that. Okay, so now we're going to go into the ITP2 core new. And in here, if we look at the file systems, I'm then going to ITP2. And if we look at the file system, <clears throat> we notice that we have everything we need to do an install. We have the, the data. We have the web client and we have the wildfly. And this is the complete wildfly. So you, normally I put everything in the op directory. So sudo move wildfly to op, done. And so for the web client, if we look at the web client, we can just do cop, uh, copy RF. So you can either move it or copy it. The wildfly, I moved it. This one I'm gonna copy. Um, we should just, verify what's in that folder which is nothing which is good and so i'm going to copy it sudo because it's uh, protected and now everything's here ready to log in so let's uh, begin by uh, configuring the wildfly so if we go to the opt wildfly so the first thing i like to do is add a user called the wildfly sudo add user wildfly and then at that point, everything in this Wildfly 17 folder is going to be owned by, uh, by Wildfly. So, so now that we have the user's Wildfly created and the folder, we're going to do a change owner because of the group, of, the user of Wildfly and the group of Wildfly, and then the folder. Uh, when you add a user, it creates by default a group by the same name. And now if we look at the folder, we'll see that's owned by Wildfly. So the next thing I like to do is I like to set it up so that Wildfly could automatically uh, start up on boot. So to complete that task, we go into docs, and then we go into con contrib, scripts, and then init.d. You can also use the services or system D depending on your platform. But I will I copy this wild, uh, I pseudo copy this Wildfly, I pseudo copy this wild wildfly init red cap to my etsy rc init.d and i call it wildfly 
So the next thing is there was another file in here, which was called this wildfire.com. I copy that file. I copy that file to my Etsy default, and I also call it Wildfly. Okay. So the next thing I do is I copy the where the location of the uh, Wildfly is, and I edit that file I just copied. I edit that file that I just copied under Etsy default wildfly. At this portion, it's um, wildfly used to be called JBoss. So you see a lot of JBoss references. It's just um, it, it's wildfly was came after uh, JBoss, but here is where I put the location of the wildfly. Insert. Okay. The next thing is because we created that user wildfly user, so that will be uncommented, and then the rest I usually leave alone. So I save that, and so now that's basically everything that's needed in order to set up the ITB2 software. If we take a look at the directory. Uh, If we go into the standalone folder and then deployment, this is where it contains the itv2.war file, um, the JAWS for SQL, Postgres, and Oracle, and then all the XML files. And so in here, this is where we will need to configure the location of the database. So if we take a look at the CRC one, You'll notice that it begins by having, uh, uh, this is the Oracle one. So this is an example of connecting up to the Oracle CRC. And it's broken into two sections. You have your bootstrap VS, and then you have your actual data files. The bootstrap VS connects up to the, um, to the, to the Hive database. And so then if we go down, we will notice that there's one for Postgres, And likewise, there's one for SQL Server. And these are examples of how the structure should be laid out uh, for the valid config checker, the URL. So we'll edit this in a little bit um, once we know what our database looks like. So if we go back to our folder and then go in, into our unzipped folder, we'll notice that we have, we've uh, copied the web client over, we've copied over Wildfly. So the next thing we need to do is deal with loading the data. But before we begin loading the data, we need to configure Postgres in order to uh, load the, create a database, create a user. So we'll begin by logging into, logging into the Postgres. So if we sudo su Postgres, this will log, switch us over to the Postgres user. And so now we can do PSQL. And then you'll notice that it could not connect to server. 